So I think you've heard tonight two very different visions for our country. One that is focused on the future and the other that is focused on the past and an attempt to take us backward. But we're not going back. And I do believe that the American people know we all have so much more in common than what separates us. And we can chart a new way forward. And a vision of that includes having a plan, understanding the aspirations, the dreams, the hopes, the ambition of the American people, which is why I intend to create an opportunity economy, investing in small businesses, in new families, in what we can do around protecting seniors, what we can do that is about giving hardworking folks a break and bringing down the cost of living. I believe in what we can do together that is about sustaining America's standing in the world and ensuring that we have the respect that we so rightly deserve, including respecting our military and ensuring we have the most lethal fighting force in the world. I will be a president that will protect our fundamental rights and freedoms, including the right of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government tell her what to do. So she just started by saying she's going to do this, she's going to do that, she's going to do all these wonderful things. Why hasn't she done it? She's been there for three and a half years. They've had three and a half years to fix the border. They've had three and a half years to create jobs and all the things we talked about. Why hasn't she done it? She should leave right now, go down to that beautiful White House, go to the Capitol, get everyone together and do the things you want to do, but you haven't done it and you won't do it because you believe in things that the American people don't believe in. You believe in things like we're not going to frack, we're not going to take fossil fuel, we're not going to do things that are going to make this country strong, whether you like it or not. But I just ask one simple question. Why didn't she do it? We're a failing nation. We're a nation that's in serious decline. We're being laughed at all over the world. We have wars going on in the Middle East. We have wars going on with Russia and Ukraine. We're going to end up in a third world war, and it'll be a war like no other because of nuclear weapons, the power of weaponry. I rebuilt our entire military. She gave a lot of it away to the Taliban. She gave it to Afghanistan. What these people have done to our country, and maybe toughest of all, is allowing millions of people to come into our country. Many of them are criminals, and they're destroying our country. The worst president, the worst vice president in the history of our country. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken began meetings with top U.K. officials in London on Tuesday, starting with his British counterpart David Lammy. The U.K. Foreign Secretary said their wide-ranging talks would cover the war in Ukraine, efforts to stabilize the Middle East, as well as partnerships in the Indo-Pacific region. Blinken said the U.K. remained an indispensable partner in dealing with Russian aggression, conflict in the Middle East and challenges posed by China. The visit comes amid a busy week of transatlantic diplomacy that also includes a meeting in Washington between British Prime Minister Keir Starmer and U.S. President Joe Biden. In my first week um, in office, I went to Washington, of course. We met for the NATO um, uh, conference. We have been, I think we've spoken nearly every other week um, uh, in that period for which I'm hugely uh, grateful. But on Russian aggression particularly, um, the backing and the um, stalwart position of standing with Ukraine, tackling the Iranian malign activity, and of course, in our st support and efforts to stabilize um, issues in the Middle East. This is hugely, hugely important. It's also important for um, uh, our partnership in the Indo-Pacific, 
uh, and our approach to China. Um, and so I'm looking forward to the discussions that will embed this strategic dialogue going forward. And I'm very, very grateful, Tony, for you spending the time um, here today. For us, uh, the UK is the indispensable partner when it comes to the very issues that, uh, that David was talking about, whether it's dealing with the Russian aggression against Ukraine, whether it's dealing with the conflict uh, in the Middle East, uh, whether it's dealing with the challenge posed by, by China, and so many transnational issues that have no respect for borders and that have a profound impact on the lives of people around the world. I can't think of two governments, two countries, where we have more daily, sometimes hourly, communication uh, on everything that matters, but making sure that we have the strategic framework uh, for that is vitally important, and I'm so glad we're doing it. Thank you. Thank you.